oh my word, do we really need another 223 versus 556 story? Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. I say yes. I just got a whole huge load of brass in from Capital Cartridge and have been researching and preparing for a whole bunch of 223 and 556 related stories, stories around the AR-15, loading and shooting, all of this. And I found a ton of misinformation and I found some big gaps in the information that you need to fully understand this problem domain. So in this video, we're going to give a brief history of the development of this cartridge and the corresponding AR-15 and M16 rifle platform. We're going to talk about differences in chambers, differences in ammunition, safe interoperability guidelines, reloading. Let's get to it. In the 1950s, through an organization called CONARC, the US Army outlined the requirements for their next generation modern rifle platform. These requirements included a 22 caliber projectile, supersonic bullet velocity at 500 yards, a net rifle weight of six pounds or less, a magazine capacity of 20 rounds, select fire for both semi-automatic and fully automatic use, penetration of a US steel helmet on one side at 500 yards, penetration of 135 thousandth of an inch steel plate, that's about 10 gauge, at 500 yards, accuracy in ballistics equal to M2 ball ammunition, that's the 30-06 ammunition used in the M1 Garand, and wounding ability equal to the M1 carbine. This wasn't just about the rifle, this was about the rifle and the ammunition that would be used in it. And that's what led to the joint development of the 223 Remington ammunition and the AR-15 rifle platform that would be adopted by the U.S. Army as the M16. While Remington Arms took a lead on the ammunition side, Eugene Stoner and Armalite Rifle took a lead on the rifle platform side. But this was a truly joint industry effort. The industry working together to help satisfy the requirements that the Army had outlined in the 50s for the next generation rifle platform. So, in 1963, Remington introduced their civilian version of the ammunition outcome from this effort, 223 Remington. A year later, the Army adopted the Army version of the AR-15 rifle platform, called it the M16, with full auto and semi-auto firing capabilities, but they didn't specify 223 Remington ammunition. That would be too simple. They specified a new specification for ammunition called 5.56 NATO. And this, people, is where the trouble started. Because 5.56 NATO and 223 Remington are almost the same, but they are not. Let's take a look at the differences. If you pick up a 223 cartridge and a 5.56 cartridge, on the outside, they are identical, nearly identical. For all intents and purposes, the exterior dimensions are the same. The differences will be seen when you look at the case rim. First off, on the 5.56 cartridge, you'll see a date code, potentially, a symbol, those kinds of things. You'll also see a stamped ring around the primer itself. That's the crimped primer pocket, and it's a way that the U.S. military ensures that the primer won't back out during warfare, full auto fire, that kind of thing. On the 223 cartridge, you won't see that crimped primer pocket, and you'll see a 223 rem or 223 plus a part of the manufacturer's name. Starline puts the little line on there, of course, that kind of thing. But what about the case itself? If you look online, you'll see that 223 has a working pressure rating of about 55,000 PSI, while 5.56 has a working pressure specification of about 63,000 PSI. So, the 5.56 brass must be thicker and stronger, right? Wrong. It has more to do with how pressure testing is done than it does with the actual working limits of pressure between these two cartridges. The SAMI methodology, which is what 223 Remington abides by, uses what's called a conforming line on the case. A hole is drilled right where that conforming line is, and pressure is measured through a port via a piezoelectric transducer. This gives a very accurate reading of pressure over time as the bullet starts to move and as it goes down the bore, that kind of thing. With the 5.56 cartridge, the military uses a couple different methodologies for testing. The first is EPVAT. Now this type of testing involves a pressure port, a hole drilled forward of the case mouth. And that makes it very easy 
and quick to take measurements and to do that type of testing because you don't have to drill through the case itself. You don't have to make sure everything's lined up, that kind of thing. But peak pressures are higher. The readings are higher, even with the same equivalent cartridge. And the actual noise level in the pressure measurement, the fluctuation that's just due to the dynamics of the measurement is also a factor and that has to be filtered out as well. Along comes a second methodology, SCATP. This is more similar to the civilian SAMI method for measuring pressure. A hole is drilled through the case, it's in about the same location, and guess what? The SCATP specification for 5.56 ammo is about 55,000 PSI. So at the end of the day, these cases are very similar and, and all else being equal, they're virtually identical and interoperable. The cases themselves, I've weighed a whole bunch of these cases and I've found 223 that weigh more, I've found 5.56 that weigh more, but their differences have more to do with how they're certified and tested than with the actual cases themselves. Where there is a big difference is the chambers 5.56 chambers and 223 Remington chambers are different. Let's take a look at how that looks on paper. So after doing a whole bunch of research and consulting with multiple industry partners, I came up with this summary of the differences in chamber dimensions between 223 Remington and 5.56 NATO. Just know that every reamer manufacturer is going to grind their reamers to the specifications they feel best represent these guidelines, and every rifle manufacturer is gonna tweak things just a little bit, and then there's all of the hybrid chambers. Let's walk through the numbers that I came up with. You can draw what conclusions you will. So this diagram represents a cross-sectional cutaway of your rifle's barrel and focuses on the chamber dimensions, specifically the differences between 223 and 5.56. Starting at the back, the base diameter for 5.56 is about two thousandths of an inch larger. The shoulder diameter is about seven tenths of one thousandth of an inch larger. From the base to the shoulder plus four thousandths of an inch for 5.56, from the base to the front of where the case mouth would be, about three thousandths of an inch longer on 5.56. But where the real interesting differences come in are with the free bore. The free bore is that smooth section of bore ahead of where the cartridge sits, but before the rifling, where the bullet jumps just a little bit before it's guided into the rifling by the throat. The throat is the angled section, kind of like a forcing cone on a revolver. For 5.56, the free bore diameter is about two and a half thousandths larger. But the key difference really is the freebore length itself. For 223, it's 25 thousandths of an inch. For 556, it's double that. This makes a big difference with the kind of pressure characteristics that different bullet profiles are going to have for ammunition chambered in these two different rifles. So, what about shooting 223 Remington and shooting 5.56 NATO ammunition? Two different cartridges a bunch of different variant chamberings, what's the interoperability story? The safest rule to abide by is, if you've got 5.56 NATO ammunition, you need to shoot it in a 5.56 NATO chamber. If you have 223 Remington ammunition, you can shoot it in any of the variant chamberings, including 223 Remington, 223 Wild, the Noveski chambering, and 5.56. Why is this? It actually has to do with bullet profiles. The military uses a bunch of different specifications for 5.56. One such case is the 63 grain tracer load. And this 63 grain bullet is less dense because of the phosphorus inside. That means it requires more volume. And one of the ways to get more volume is to move the ogive of the bullet forward on the bullet profile. The ogive is the curve of the bullet that first contacts the rifling. When they move that ogive forward, that means there's more of a likelihood of peak pressures as the pressure is building inside the case and as that bullet is starting to move in the free bore towards the throat. And this is where 5.56 with twice the free bore has less peak pressure under those circumstances compared with 223 Remington. So there are a lot of interesting cases in the middle where interoperability may be possible between 5.56 NATO ammunition and 223 or other chambers, I would really urge you to do your research and be very careful. You are responsible for your own safety. There may be things you can figure out that are safe to do, 
but do your research first and always look for pressure signs. It's not worth risking your life. So that pretty much covers interoperability. What about reloading? That's a whole nother interoperability story. Now reloading 223 Remington, reloading 5.56 NATO, pretty much follow all of the basic guidelines for equipment and process that you'd find when, with any other bottleneck cartridge. The one difference being that you really have to be careful with case prep on 5.56 NATO to remove that crimped primer pocket. You gotta swage it, you gotta ream it, you gotta do something to get rid of it so you have smooth primer. Beyond that, the key consideration is load data. We talked about the cases and how the cases may or may not be different. Well, it turns out that the load data is different. The cases might not be different, but they might be certified differently. The ammunition, the pressure ratings, all of that. So the safest thing to do is to use 5.56 NATO load data when you're loading 5.56 NATO cases and use 223 Remington load data when you're loading 223 Remington cases. If you look in some of the load manuals, like the Hornady load manual, they actually have separate data that is very similar, maybe slightly different. Again, better to be safe than sorry. Better to be careful than careless when it comes to your own life and the longevity of your firearm, the safety of those around you, that kind of thing. So I've got a whole bunch of videos on loading 223, Remington and 5.56 NATO and other bottleneck cartridges that you can check out, but make sure that you're using the right data for the right load. I hope that you found this video useful. I absolutely love to shoot and load 223 Remington and 5.56 NATO. I've got all this brass from Capital Cartridge that I'm excited to process and use, and I've got more stories coming up on that. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you don't wanna miss any of the action here on GavinTube, subscribe to my channel. Till next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.